Okay, guys, so we are moving on with the sensory organs. We're continuing on with the special senses. The previous lecture did smell and taste, and now we're doing equilibrium. And then I'll do separate ones for hearing and then for vision as well. So this is just equilibrium. Equilibrium is your sense of balance. It also helps you monitor gravity and any kind of movement, and it's going to be located in the inner ear. The functional classification for the receptors that monitor equilibrium, those are mechanoreceptors. Remember, mechanoreceptors means that they activate when they change shape. So we'll look at those specifically. Okay, so we're inside of the inner ear, you have two general structures. You have the cochlea. The cochlea is for hearing. The rest of these blue structures is called the vestibular apparatus, and the vestibular apparatus um, is going to be used for equilibrium. So the cochlea for hearing, the vestibular apparatus for equilibrium. And within the, the vestibular apparatus, you have two functional regions. The first is the semicircular canals. See these half circles, so semi half semicircle canals. And those semicircular canals are going to be oriented in three different planes. You have the anterior canal that goes in the front. Then you have the posterior canal going towards the back. And then you have a, a lateral canal that kind of goes at an angle. And that allows you to monitor rotational acceleration in multiple different planes. So those are the semicircular canals there. And then you have the, the vestibular, the vestibule or the otolithic organs. Either of those names are fine. So I generally, this is the, this fat part down here, that's the vestibule or the otolithic organs. Within there, there are two structures, two little membrane bound structures. The first is the utricle. The utricle is going to be the one that is closest to the semicircular canals. That's the utricle. And then the one that is closer to the cochlea, that will be the saccule. The utricle and the saccule, both within the otolithic organs, also known as the vestibule. Okay, so let's look at this internal structure. So if you look inside of the vestibular apparatus, what you see is a soft membrane and that soft membrane is going to follow all of the sort of the twists and turns of the semicircular canals and it's going to make up the outer structure of the utricle and the saccule. So you've got an outside that's hard, like bone, so a bony labyrinth is what that's called. And then running down the middle of it is the membraneous labyrinth, which just means it's made up of a soft sac. And that soft sac is going to be filled with a different fluid. So on, on, around the outside, um, kind of between the soft sac and the hard membrane, the hard bone on the outside, that's called the perilymph. Remember, peri is around and lymph means fluid. So the perilymph is going to be around the outside. And then inside of that soft sac, so inside of the membraneous labyrinth, labyrinth is like a maze, <clears throat> inside of the membraneous labyrinth is the endolymph. Endo means inside, so the fluid in the inside. So if you're looking at this picture here, the dark blue would represent the membraneous labyrinth filled with endolymph. <clears throat> and the lighter blue would be the bony labyrinth, the outside that's gonna be filled with perilymph. So you have two different regions filled with a different fluid. By the way, that's going to be the same as for the cochlea, which we will get to when we get to hearing. Okay, on to the receptor cells. <clears throat> Those receptor cells are going to be found inside of the membraneous labyrinth, so inside of that, so sort of in the middle here where the endolymph is going to be, and they have a very specific name. So the specific type of receptor cells that monitor equilibrium they're called hair cells. Now looking at this picture here, why do you think they're called hair cells? It's because they have these little hair like extensions that stick up on the top of the cell and those are called stereocilia. 
So they're different from cilia because they do not move, they're not creating currents, they're not sweeping anything anywhere. They are stereocilia. And again, they're just little extensions of the plasma membrane. And what they do is they help activate the cell because when those little hair cells, sorry, when, when the stereocilia of the hair cells are bent, that is what depolarizes or activates the cell to create electrical signals. Okay, so if they, if the cell, if the receptor is activated when the set shape of the cell changes, what would be the functional classification for hair cells? They are mechanoreceptors because bending is a type of change in shape, right? So when they bend those stereocilia to the side, that's what activates the cell. That's a mechanical change, a physical change in shape, and therefore these will be mechanoreceptors. So those four functional classifications are very important. Make sure you understand those. Okay, let's get into the otolithic organs, also known as the vestibule, which is this part right here. Remember, we have the utricle on the top, closest to the semicircular canals, and the saccule on the bottom, closer to the cochlea here. Both of them contain an organ that has those hair cells in them called the macula. So the macula is going to be inside of the utricle and inside of the saccule. So kind of get your organization pattern in check. Okay, so looking at the macula. Here, so again, these are both, so these are both, these are inside of the utricle and the saccule. And they, here's your epithelium, the, you know, the outside tissue layer. These are your modified epithelial cells. Those are the receptor cells that are called hair cells. So the whole cell is the hair cell. Sticking up the top of the cell this, these structures are called stereocilia. Now for the macula, those stereocilia are going to be embedded in a, in a jelly-like membrane. That, so think of like jello, like, like wiggly jello. That is called the otolithic membrane. And the reason it's called the otolithic membrane is because it has these little calcium crystals. So little calcium carbonate crystals, sort of like sand is embedded on the surface of the otolithic membrane. And what that does is it makes it so that this membrane is heavier because what, what, these, what, the, what the macula senses is gravity, so like downwards, and any kind of linear changes in motion. Okay, so for example, here is the macula there. There's the otoliths embedded in the otolithic membrane with those stereocilia kind of jutting up into it. And so what happens is when you, for example, if you look down, it, the otolithic membrane, because it's nice and heavy with those crystals in it, it's going to flow towards down. And as it flows, it's going to bend those stereocilia, cilia, so they're kind of just flow with it. And when you bend the stereocilia, that's what's going to activate those hair cells, and that's what brings the signal to the brain. And that's how you can, even if your eyes are closed, if you're hung upside down, you always know which way down is because you can sense the gravity. If this also is activated, if, for example, if you're in a car and then suddenly you stop because the otolithic membrane is going to continue to flow forward with momentum, and as it flows forward, where's the rest of it stop? That'll bend those stereocilia, and that's what activates the hair cells. And that's how you can change, you can monitor um, linear changes in momentum, like so stopping and starting or going to side to side. Okay, so the macula is inside the otolithic organs, which include the utricle and the saccule. And both of them monitor gravity and linear changes in movement. Okay, so the semicircular canals. Remember, these, these are these half circles up here. Remember that they are oriented in three different planes. You have the anterior canal, the posterior canal, and the lateral canal, which is at a sort of like a diagonal. 
And what happens for those is they are also filled with endolymph in the inside. And what they can do is they monitor rotational acceleration. So anytime there's any kind of spinning or tumbling or circles of any kind, turning your head, for example, that's gonna create, that's gonna make the endolymph begin to flow. And if, as you begin to flow, you can monitor changes in movement because the fluid will continue to flow even after you've stopped. Okay, so the, so the fluid will flow through the full circle and at the base of each circle is a little fat part. Okay, so that's called an ampulla. Ampulla just means fat part. And inside of those ampulla, ampullae for plural, that is called the crista ampullaris. So the organ that contains the hair cells for the semicircular canals is going to be the crista ampullaris. Okay, so here we have, so looking right here, so this would be, oh, oh, wrong way. So here we, if we're looking down, is he, flowing through the half circle here. So this part right here is the same as what's going on right here. Okay, so this would be the end of the circle. So here we have the little fat part, the ampulla. And in that ampulla is the crista ampullaris. And what happens is as the fluid is flowing down from the semicircular, the canal, it's going to flow over the crista ampullaris. Okay, so looking at the crista ampullaris, here are the hair cells. Those are the receptors. The hair cells have their little stereocilia sticking out of the top. And the stereocilia are embedded in another gelatinous mass. So again, think of like a big blob of jello sitting on top of it. And that gelatinous mass is now called the cupula. So the cupula is the jello structure sitting on top of the crista ampullaris where the hair cell stereocilia are embedded into. And so as the endolymph flows over it, that's gonna make it so the, the cupula, it kind of bends to the side. And as it bends to the side, those stereocilia that were embedded into it are going to bend. And that's when the hair cells were going to uh, be activated. Okay, so that's going to sense rotational spinning movements in the hip. Okay, so let's do a quick review. First thing is name. Just a second, honey. Shh. Okay, just a second. Let me pause. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so now what we're going to do is do a mini review. And so I'm hoping that you've had a chance to go through this. The first thing we're going to do is name these structures. Okay, so we're not looking for the name of the receptor cell. The receptor cell name is called the hair cell. What's the name of the structures that stick up from the top of the hair cell? Those would be called stereocilia. Now note that stereocilia are not the same as cilia. Cilia move and create currents. And these just stick up and bend in order to activate the cell. Okay, so name the structures in the utricle and the sacral that monitor the gravity. So these would be the one, the structures that contain those hair cells and on top of the hair cells would be the otolithic or the otolithic membrane, but the whole structure would be called the macula. The macula is that whole thing, including the otolithic membrane and the hair cells that, they, that embed into it. Okay, name the gelatinous mass. So for here, that we're looking at the whole thing is called the crista ampullaris. That's the entire structure, the entire organ. Sitting on top of the hair cells, so in blue here, those would be the hair cells. What's the name of the gelatinous mass sitting on top? Starts with a C, that would be the cupula. Okay, so again, the whole thing is the crista ampullaris, which is found at the base of the semicircular canals. And this specific structure of the crista ampullaris is called the cupula. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's go on to 